Hi, welcome to another episode of Drum and Bass Arena Foundations, where we are telling the story of the very roots of this music and this culture. And there is no stronger foundation than the story of AWOL, truly a way of life. We've got three of the original artists who are on board for AWOL. We have got Mickey Finn, we've got Kenny Ken, and we've got the man like GQ. In a moment, guys, you are going to take me to paradise, literally. But first, let's set the scene. Let's set the scene. Let's tell me how all of this came together. And I believe the two people need a little big up, JP and Chris, the original promoters. So let's start right there and let's get right into the AWOL story and how it truly changed so many people's lives. I think we'll start with you, Gary. Okay. Well, welcome, ladies and gents, guys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew JP and Chris and them guys from South End uh, before AWOL and World Dance. They were putting on little parties uh, beyond therapy and other things over by um, the Silver City. Just little parties they were putting on all over the places and house parties and stuff. We used to hang out. There was a bunch of us, me, Richie Fingers. Frankie Barnes, Tony Tracks and stuff. And we used to meet up with those guys. Um, and we used to just put on these, they used to put on these little parties. We used to play for them. They had some clubs running in South End and stuff as well. Um, and they were just heading to do some great stuff. And JP, I think JP, the first time he met you, I think he kidnapped you and took you to South End. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, because it used to be a bunch of us. I mean, it used to be JP, Gary... Uh, Sean, there was a firm of them, probably about seven of them, eight of them, um, who were all just party heads. And so they were putting on these little parties all over the place. Um, and out of that, you know, some some great things grew out of that. Um, and then, you know, we had the world dances and then we had the A wall, but they were always destined, that firm, the original firm, to do some great stuff, always. Brilliant. And how did you guys get involved? How do you two, Mickey, Mickey and Kenny, how do you guys kind of know JP and Chris then? Um, uh, how did I meet JP now? Uh, I think I met him at, was it Clink Street? I think I met him at Clink Street or somewhere like that. And um, he he told me that he was running this thing called, this new thing at Paradise Club called AWOL. And he wanted me, Mickey, Gary, I think it was uh, um, Frank, uh, what's his name again? Oh, I forget his name now. Trevor Fung. Trevor Fung, that's Trevor it, yeah. Fung, Trevor right. Fung, yeah. Mickey will remember everything. Yeah. But I said to JP, you have to get Mickey Finn and you have to get Kenny. I said yeah. to him, you have to get them man there because right. them man popping off, right? Yeah, right. They're the original man. But here's the joke, Here the joke, here the joke, right? I was, I had, I had, you know, back in the days we had the world of bookings every night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I missed the first AWOL, right? The first ever one, I missed it, right? And they called me to the office in the week. So why did I miss it? And Jay said to me, Jay said to me, Ken, I don't want to get rid of you, but he wants to get rid of you, right? The other guy, Chris, right? Chris. So I went in and I just told him straight, listen, it was my fault. I was overworked and I just missed the booking, you know what I mean, right? So Jay was cool, but Chris were cool. But Jay weren't, Chris wanted to get rid of me, but Jay weren't having it. Jay said, Jay was adamant, he was adamant that I stay there, you know what I mean? So from that day, I never missed another act all after that. <laughs> <laughs> I never missed it, but you could have missed it though, because it was the thing that that time, it was the main place to be at anyway, you know yeah. what I mean? It was a hot spot. So, was yeah, definitely. it was a hot spot. You could have missed that, you know what I mean? And I was kind of vexed that I missed the first one, you know what I mean? But, you know, because of Jay, Jay just was adamant that Kenny stayed, you know what I mean? And then Christian. Can't get really Kenny, man. Are you mad? You know yeah, what I mean? You know what I, mean? <laughs> I mean, what Jay said really, you know, I salute Chris because them guys made something, but Jay was the fireman. Do you understand what he was the man? Yeah, he was he was the man who said what was what, and, and that was that. Do you know what I mean? He put together a crack team with you guys, really, I didn't he? I mean, Mickey, tell me about how kind of the team of you came together, because obviously it's yourselves, well, um, Paul, Dr. S, Gache as well, Darren J as well, and then Randall too. So tell me how it all came together, Mickey. I kind of didn't have no previous with JP. Uh, Gary and Kenny knew Jay. Uh, I didn't know Jay until Jay got on the phone and went, <laughs> and I put the phone down and my missus went to me how much snow did that geezer just sell to the Eskimos like 
which I loved him. I, Jay's a bit of me, really. So we yeah. got we got on like an house on fire. I I I used to work up an awful lot, and I didn't concentrate on London so much. I would work in London, <coughs> but I loved up north. So he was basically on the phone off. I've got this idea for a residency, and I want you to be a part of the team. And that was a well. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say even though it was busy. I, I like I don't know when it opened. It's got to be ninety one, ninety two. Even though yeah. a lot of its power house days were like maybe ninety four and ninety five, and ninety three. Yeah, but it kind of opened. You're talking kick drum era. Really. Yeah, yes. We're all playing still. If you want to say, you know, hardcore going into jungle techno. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was like yeah. a kick drum, right? I, I mean, I was saying to Darren this morning. I can remember Lenny D coming over there, and you know, there's kick drum, and then there's Lenny D just trashed the place for nothing. Mm. You know, poor Lenny, he just cleared the dance floor because it was just way too hard. There was a few people that it, came in. Who, it, it was, yeah, who had a little test run in there. I mean, yeah. Trevor was in there. He weren't in there for that long. Um, well, Trevor he was part of the original team. Yeah, he right. was. A, he was a lovely guy as well. Yeah, Trevor Funk was part of the original. Yeah, he was the yeah. original team. But it was more. I think it was more based for what me and Mickey was on and what you was on, Gal. You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. really because Trevor was on a different tip, wasn't he? He was. Really? In a, he was a, I think it was the testing grant. It was testing yeah. at that period of time. Yeah, he, he's. You know, he was actually yeah. the bond, and it was going to stay like that. And Trevor came in um, because I remember speaking to Jay. He would say to me, like, who do you think, you know, at the beginning when he was starting it? Because, you know, who do you think we should get? You know what I mean? And I was saying, you know, he already was going to get Kenny. And I said, you need to get Mickey down there. Do you yeah. understand what I mean? Because, you know, Mickey Bomber Club Finn. Do you yeah. understand what I mean? Right? <laughs> <laughs> it was Club Finn. So you got to get Mickey down there to make sure you read him. You know, other people would think. And I said that because when we went into Paradise Club, I was working with Richie Fingers, uh, Tony Trax, and all of them guys there, and it split. When we went in there, I was upstairs with them guys, and Richie and them lot was downstairs, downstairs yeah. playing the house with yeah. uh, Roy the Roach. Um, yeah, that's right. And, and a few other people down there. Yeah, because, um, I mean, that's a whole other story in it. That's where, that's the roots of UK Garage. That plays yeah. a story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, story it, it went in there, and it just it, it split. Certain man was upstairs, and then man there was downstairs. And, and the whole of the club, actually, if you went there, you was getting actually the best of the best music at that time. Yeah. You yeah. My house, you know, yeah. man was drawing some, you know, you get some, Gary Mason was downstairs sitting on the speaker, you know what I mean? God bless his soul and stuff. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like, there were people who was passing through. Do you know what I mean? It, it was a serious place, man. It was a serious place. Yeah, I used place. to go, I used to go, when I used to finish my set, I used to go downstairs and listen to some house as well. You know what I mean? Because that's how it was. That's how it yeah. was. You know what I mean? Oh, like, I used to hear good music. That's where we come from. Let's not get it twisted. Exactly. 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 That's right. We are, we are here because of house music. Yeah, that's I right. I don't want to hear it. But, but it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. You know, it's if we're going to look to a mother and she had loads of children, we're going to look to Acid House. That's yeah. right. Yeah, you that's right. Real. You should start yeah. having affairs with everyone. Yeah, and I'm, like, still, I, I'm still playing that music to this day. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, house music, I've never lost my life for house music. You know what I mean? It's impossible, man. You know what I mean? Because you know we all I mean? come from that. We all come from that and watch the transition from that. Yeah. In, you know what I mean? To where it is now. So yeah. it's like, if anybody, but, if, hey, if anybody turned around and said, oh, about, you know, jungle, you'd have to say, well, you know, you'd have to go back. Do you understand what I mean? And yeah. talk about the transitions before it yeah. turned into what it, before it turned into that. That's and right. It's and it's important. But AWOL was the place where these transitions happened, or one of the places where these transitions happened, really. And Paradise was accommodating for that, wasn't it? It was the type of club that had the type of vibe. And you managed that you grew a community that were thirsty for those transitions and those new sounds. It was a testing ground, wasn't it? But Paradise yeah. allowed that. It was a very special club, wasn't it? I, the I right think, balance and everything. I think it was uh, the beauty of Paradise Club as well, because... For me to host all of the guys, yeah, I could see, you know, every man weren't ramping in there. Everybody yeah, nah. was coming with the ammunition. Yeah. It was <laughs> dub plate central, all right? Because this week I'm like, all right, Kenny's going to drop this dub plate. And Kenny come and box up with this dub plate. Mickey come with this dub plate. 
right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Randall yeah. Comedy Star Play, Darren Comedy, it was Star Play Central. Yeah, it was. It was. it was the testing ground. I even, I, do you remember the sound clash when I had the sound clash, right? Yeah. I even. I don't remember that. What, what I was played that? at Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I played at Paradise Club before. The set before that, I played at Paradise Club. And Paradise Club was my testing ground to see if I'd go and win the Sound Clash. And I tore down Paradise Club. And then I remember Randall and Goldie saying to me, don't come back without the belt, you know? Don't come back without the belt. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, it was a yeah. unique place, man. For me, you know, I'm hearing the living tunes every week. Yeah. And every man... In my mind, I used to say, all right, then, who's coming with the... Um, Who's coming with the headbutts today, then? Yeah, yeah. With the headbutts. Who's coming with the choppers? You know what I mean? And it, 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 You know what, though? It used to keep every man on their toes. It was a place where we could go and test out our new tunes. We could, we could, it, was, it was like, like all the producers used to give us their tunes to play at Paradise Club. That was the testing ground for the whole yeah. scene, as far as I'm concerned. Because we used to remember, we used to get people coming down from Manchester, Scotland, oh, Liverpool. Everywhere. Everywhere. Well, everywhere. The wow's maybe you think you can mostly go to every corner of the country and yeah. have people coming now. And yeah. I was gonna say, I think for a club to get that, there has to be a serious attraction. That yes. security team was red yeah. hot. Yeah. yeah. Fire. You, yeah. You walked in that door if you got in because it did <laughs> get in that state. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that, for real. That club got to a point <clears throat> where it had two shifts of people in a night, especially on the one o'clock end. Yeah. End, yeah. You know, you yeah. had a shift leave and you had another shift turn up bright That's as right. days at eight o'clock in the morning. And I That's think right. as they walked inside that door, the safety creates an energy in itself. Yeah, yeah. There was a serious community in that club. Yeah, 100%. Where you started saying hello to people because you just saw them week in, week out. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was a serious family unit going on in there, even though not a lot of people knew each other, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And then you had an unbelievable system, you know, yeah. especially once <clears throat> I kind of rung Jay, I went, listen, dude, I played on this system. It's called Eskimo Noise. I don't know what it is, but it made my knees bend when the bass line come in. You've got to track him down. Once the Eskimo Noise rig went in there, it was... It's a different I thing. I remember once, my eyes were... I couldn't see Gary properly. My eyes were... <laughs> 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 still behind the decks going, go on, send you to keep the decks straight. And the bass line, I mean, my legs would just go at the knees. I know I'm getting yeah, up. Yeah, it was the spot, man. It was a great stand. Yeah, yeah, Paradise. Paradise was the spot back in the day. That was the number one spot. You can get, you can get a comp or a club that just everything comes together right. Yeah. Rage. I think the crowd, the crowd as well. The, the crowd. The crowd, yeah. yeah. The crowd. You, you could not. The, the beauty of it is that the crowd was spoiled. So yeah. every week, without a doubt, until that club, from the club opened, until the whole of Paradise Club shut down, you would get tunes every week. And the every crowd week. was, they were super spoiled, that crowd. Yeah. They were spoiled, do you understand 100%. what I'm saying? I mean, they were so spoiled. So if you was a guest DJ and you came, you had to be on your A game. Because <laughs> if, you came, if you came there and you yeah. were dropping rhythms, they would let you know. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? You ain't getting no forwards too tough. It would be a little bit weak. You know, yeah. usually it's a tsunami in there like that every week, yeah? Every weekend. And if you come in and you weren't dropping tunes you, and you weren't moving the crowd, it'd just be like a little bit kind of little fuzzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean? that, that crowd for me was one of the most um, uniquest crowds because they used to get spoiled with good music. Um, Weekend, two hour sets, yeah. two hour sets, yeah. yeah. Two hour two hour set. I think it's almost like if you had a team that is absolutely the synergy and the flow of it's like just premiership, and then yeah. you take someone out and bring someone in from the Sunday League, yeah, yeah. that's so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Mickey. No, that was it. That's it. That's it, bro. It didn't mean to come across like that, but it's almost like. When the synergy was so tight with that, Kenny, Darren, Gache, me, Gary, that week in, week out with that team, and then as yeah. soon as someone come in, uh, and it could be a really big name, and I'm, I weren't bringing them down in any way, but you kind of really notice the difference. 
Yeah. Well, well I, I remember. It's a bit I like remember. that Groove and Fabio had rage kind of locked, you know? Yeah. It was their baby. They knew what they wanted. Yeah. A bit like us, though. We knew what was going to attract them. Like. Yeah, yeah. You but couldn't I, I, come in with nothing. If, Like I said, yeah, I told him I could run down the back-to-back one time in there, right? And I said to Ron, I said, listen, bruv, understand when you come in this place here, you know, <laughs> you better draw some rhythm. Because yeah. if you don't draw rhythm and you don't think, you're in problems. And I think for about a week, my man must have been rehearsing and getting tunes ready and thinking, because I said to him, I've got him a bit nervous. <laughs> you know but you know what, though? You know what, though? In saying that, though, right, Ron, when Ron done the back-to-back with Randall, right, to this day, that's one of the best back-to-backs I've ever he heard. He held it. Yeah, man, he held it. He that's one of the best back-to-backs I've he, ever he heard in my it. life. Trust he held me. it because he had to. I put fear in him. I <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean? You have to understand, when you come to this place here, you know what I mean? This is like the Mecca. Yeah, it's the Mecca, yeah. yeah. It's the Mecca. You oh, know, if, I, you know, if, I, I, if I see a couple of artists wobble down there. Oh, yeah, me too, on, me, me too, Vicky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't want to go on. They yeah. want to go on. Like, because they're not ready. And I mean... You yeah. don't get that now. Do you know? What I mean? You don't get that now. But you at that time. Because do you I, remember? Hey, do you remember when we bought over Kevin Saunderson? I can't remember that. Can't you remember? We bought Kevin yeah. Saunders. Jay bought Kevin Saunders. And we, uh, we was going, nah, nah, Jay, ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. And he played the set and he cleared the dance floor. Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> what I'm saying. And I you felt sorry for him, man. Back. I really. I mean, felt Jay was him. up. Jay was up for bringing over guests and stuff like that. Yeah. I think everybody who knew they was going to come in there, they had to prepare themselves. I mean, the beauty yeah. about it is well, Paradise Club was that when people, when certain other artists, DJs were playing their sets at different clubs, they would all come down to Paradise Club. So in the yeah. corner, you'd see Groove, you'd yeah. see Fabio, yeah. you might see this man and that, and they just stand and they're studying. Yeah, you know I mean, not only yeah. are they kind of partying and stuff, but they're also studying. They're studying, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on in this place here? But mm. when you come there, you're like, raw, okay. Do you know what I mean? Because the selection of men that you got there, for me, I'm working with all of these guys here. And I'm saying to myself, raw, do you know what I mean? Every man is drawing tunes. Yeah, it too, was though. like the A-team. <clears throat> it was the A-team, really. It was the A-team. It was the original like... A-team. And the mixing credibility, yeah, in that club there was on a different level. Like I, everybody come, what... because everybody knew they had to come and, and 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 follow the man who played, you know what I mean, before them. You know, and the whole entire this man's coming and trying to hold a mix for all half an hour, right? <laughs> this man's coming and mixing like that. Gashe is mixing his girlfriends on his back like a rock sack. Do you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah, right. I'm telling you, like, the best times of my life is in that. Yeah, club. yeah, yeah. Me you know too. I mean? was, was the one. one. And I think because it was weekly as well, like Rage was, like Swerve was, like Sunday sessions, uh, uh, Blue Note. You know, it's these weekly things where you develop. That's where a culture starts, really. Where you, that's where you build up the community. Where you've got that, like you know, kind of routine of people arriving every week, and that's where you really. I mean, that's where you refine things all as DJs, really. Yeah. Well, it did for me. A well for me. A well just being a part of AWOL opened a lot of doors for me, like all around the world, you know, because... Yeah, for me too, man. AWOL me was too. worldwide by then, you know what I mean? And like, you, everyone was hearing about AWOL and like, because remember, it was, there weren't no um, uh, Instagram and, and Facebook and all that, you know what I mean? So right. everyone was going by cassette tapes and pirate cassette radio. Cassette tapes, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what I mean, I've got a lot of gigs, I've got a lot of gigs. On the back of tapes. Through a, through a, through yeah, 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 exactly. On the back of tapes, I mean, me, yeah, yeah, through the tapes. I mean, look how long I tried to get me out of Canada for on the back of a tape with me and okay. Gary. Yeah, because uh, of my silly stuff I did as a kid, it took me about four years to get into Canada, and it 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 was all about this tape, I suppose. Cassettes were Mickey. Today's Mickey, every time. Every time I went to Canada, right, they would say, we got to get Mickey Finn out here, man. We need Mickey Finn. <laughs> Every time I went out there, it was Mickey Finn this, Mickey Finn that, Mickey Finn this. We've got to get that. all the tapes, but they didn't yeah, have Mickey Finn. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that tape, that, the, those tapes there, them tapes, um, they changed people's lives. Yeah, you know, 100%. Like, without, yeah. I, you know, I, I still, I still, which is a beautiful thing, really. Um, the people say, you know what, G, you don't think about it really deeply when people say that you just kind of take it and think oh that's nice that you say that because yeah. I'm always happy when somebody says that but when you really think about it is that people who could couldn't get to parties you know they would get 
these tapes. The yeah. tapes, yeah. So here, the that's, tapes, that was yeah. me. Like. And, the, and the tapes, you know, international with them tapes went. Yeah. yeah. Some people were like, oh, that tape was my Bible, G. It was like the Bible. Yeah. But when you think about it, you think, wow, you really changed somebody's life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, through music. They were the message system. They were the communication device. And your voice, Gary, and then obviously Fearless is as well. You know, these would guide us through any MC then, you know, on any rave tape, especially the AWOL ones that we were hearing. You guys would guide us through, you know, and it would feel like we already knew before I'd come to a gig, before I went to my first rave, 95, 96, I felt like I knew a lot of you through these tapes. Oh, yeah. They were, you know, cool, they were man. really special for everybody, really. I mean, and then we move on to the CD then because one of the biggest you know we move in a couple of you've established yourself in paradise along the way on the bank holiday weekends a while ago so big you could fill up ministry of sound yeah it was the first outside promotion to come in i believe it was all house and techno and all in-house this was the yeah. first cd to be recorded in that way yeah and again i mean i've got goosebumps <laughs> thinking about that cd man whoa, whoa, whoa. so tell, let's go back to the ministry of sound points now oh, min- uh, ministry, yeah, for me on. For me, Ministry of Sound, I couldn't believe that I was actually booked to play Jungle at Ministry of Sound. You know what I mean? It was like, wow, Ministry of Sound, you know, right? But when we went there, when I I must admit, when I went there, I was a little bit nervous because, you know, it was Ministry of Sound, you know what I mean? But the crowd, we packed it out. I remember it was packed out to the, you couldn't even move in there. And like, you know, the the, the, the applause you got when you, when you draw, like a, a tune, you know what I mean? It was it was next level, you know what I mean? It was like, wow. I think just for, I think, like you said, Kenny, you know what I mean? The ministry was a big place. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you know, it's ministry of sound. So yeah. for, for us to bring that, for Jay to bring the whole of the firm over there, well, we're all yeah. the firm anyway, but to bring yeah. that, because when he said to me, oh, you know, gee, I think about doing ministry of sound and all of that, I think we're going to make it work. And, you know, and yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what? <clears throat> I'm like, ministry is like, yeah, do you know what I mean? I've got ministry in that. And if you know JP, he speaks like, Mickey would tell you, Kenny would tell you, it's like 100 mile an hour, his brain's yeah. working. Yeah, we're going to yeah. do ministry. We're going to do that like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, bro, it really? And he goes, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm getting ministry. We're doing it. Da, 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 da. We're going to bring that over there, gal. We're going to do that like that. We're going to show them. We're going to show them, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, all yeah. right, cool. <laughs> and then I was thinking, yeah, whatever. And then I'm like, rah. He's got ministry of sound. He's got ministry of sound, got ministry yeah. Of sound. yeah. Oh, and, like, and like Kenny said, you know what I mean? Um, I think for all of us to be playing, hey, hey, Mickey's got the thing there, live up there. I <laughs> want to go to ministry. ministry. Look at that. Do you know what I mean? Go on, Mick. Yeah. <laughs> I think for all of us um, to go in ministry and play that, you know, music in ministry was a big deal for all of us. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm yeah. just like, man, could you even get in Ministry of Sound? Do you know what I mean? Let yeah. alone go and play in there. Do you understand what I mean? We've and- talked about the most powerless, most believe the, the most powerless nightclub in the country at that point. Yeah, it was. It was. About. And if I'm, my memory serves me well, which it don't nowadays, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure the first one, before he actually started going back there on a Thursday night, <coughs> I thought the first one was a Christmas night. Yes, yeah, yeah, Mick. Yeah, was I think it, it was you're a right. boxing yeah. day. I think it was a boxing day, wasn't it? Yeah, I think yeah, it was around about Christmas time. Yeah, I think you're right, Mick. It's like, mate. It was a- when did we do the album? Like- when did we do the album? The album Christmas? was once he started going in there on a Thursday night. Once he that really popped off, as you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember when the, when the uh, who was the in the name of my father about? Jerry Connellan was upstairs in the VIP and Paddy and they had a, I just remember a big dust in a drink, do you remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm on about a proper bin, like just went and must have bought Pull up a drink. Worth of spirits, filled his bin up and just stayed there hugging it in the VIP all night. <laughs> I think that worked first and then Jay went, we've got to, I don't, it weren't every Thursday, was it? Or was it? I think, I think it, was it was monthly, every... wasn't it? No, it wasn't every Thursday. No, no. Every month. Mm-hmm. I think it was once a month, wasn't it? Yeah, once a month. Yeah. But did it, it didn't lose this vibe. It didn't lose this community. All of those like loyal followers who are coming down to paradise and stuff, that special vibe, like ministry could have diluted that or mainstreamified that in any way. But you still had that special vibe. Uh, no, you, yeah, sounds as yeah, well, didn't you? Yeah, that same vibe. Oh, you know what? I think. But you're also talking. Of, you're also talking in the era where the Ministry of Sound didn't have no well-being brand. 
It had yeah. never released a record before, so it was a cool underground club in the Elephant and Castle. Yeah. The lifestyle stuff <laughs> that they now do was not on the radar, obviously. It, I don't know, but I don't know if it was that live album, because that was the first recording that had one been done in the club, and it was the first recording. Ministry hadn't even got that on their catalogue system. Yeah. It, yeah. It is that far beyond when they were releasing records at that point. We was yeah. with, some dude just turned up with a portable studio after we'd done the live recording and we just started mixing it down in, in the back room of the ministry. Yeah. Right. That album was boom as well, though. That album, that album worldwide as well. You go to Australia, you see that yeah. album in Australia, you go to America, anywhere, and you see it all over the place, man. You know what I mean? People yeah. bring it out and say to me, Ken, do you remember this? Like, I'm in Australia. Do you remember this? I've got something for you. Do you remember? Where'd you get that from? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's selling over here as well. You know what I mean? In Australia. You know what I mean? So it just yeah, shows you how big that. AWOL was, man. AWOL was massive, man. Really, really massive. Yeah. Uh, you know what? You know what I, mean? I, I, I always like, for me, like me and JP, we had a personal relationship anyway. Do you know what I mean? Before yeah. the parties. And that guy changed a lot of people's lives. Do you know what I mean? Oh, 100%. He, he changed That's a lot of people's right. lives. And, and, and he doesn't get enough credit for it. He yeah. doesn't even want the credit for it. Do you understand what I mean? He's not bothered. Jay ain't bothered. He's not bothered at all. And every time I speak to him, like, you know, we have our chats, I always say to him, oh, you know, Jay, you know, somebody was talking to him about AWOL and blah, blah, blah and stuff. And I said, you don't understand. Do you know what I mean? With the AWOL, the world dances and stuff like that, you've changed so much people's lives. Do you know what mm. I mean? To, to, to this day, like, you know, Abel was years ago. Well Dance was years ago. Yeah. People still talk about it now. The day, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you know, you change. You know, people say, oh, you know, every week I was there with that fail. Every week I'd come up there. Yeah. I'd never miss a thing. It don't matter if I've got to find a babysitter. I'll find a babysitter every week. <laughs> but it's like, you know, and he doesn't get enough credit and, for and the input. Just go, oh, just one of many great... He's just a trailblazer, isn't he? If you kind of yeah. think... No one was yeah. doing two hour sets. No one had a team. He done it and made it successful. Yeah. No one could get into the ministry. He started doing stuff, you know, in the ministry. Yeah. Done the live album before. You know, he's just he's just groundbreak after groundbreak. And that we haven't even got to lid yet. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. There you go. Yeah, when we got yeah, or, or the stuff that he did Liv. in um, the O2 arenas as well. Like, I think it was yeah. one Ministry of Sound, which was like 45,000 people or something like that. Like, he has, he's got a track record of that. But let's talk about the team. Let's talk about the other members who aren't available to be on this call. Randall. Well. Big no. up everybody who was... No, no, <laughs> 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 because <laughs> I mean I've lost count of the amount of times that Andy C just as an example has told me about being down and you know kind of worshipping Randall for example he's you know his own personal influence he's told me Gary about a time when people were called for a rewind on one of your bars you went in on something and you had to do a rewind on one of your bars Andy <laughs> told me you know you've got the no, biggest no, no, artist no, in the world no. to come through the school of AWOL like yeah oh, Andy, was oh, with his, Andy was there with his long hair yeah. You know what I mean? Like meatloaf. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no pony telling that. We used to have conversations where he said to me, you know, him, Red One, they would be there and just, like, he said it used to blow his mind. Do you know what I mean? Just to yeah. watch them not do their thing. Um, and it's quite amazing when you, you know, when he's saying that because you, we all know, you know, what he's, what he's done, you know, musically. So when you get somebody like that turn around and say, you know, gee, like, I, I never used to miss it. Every week he'd be there, you know, smashed up. <laughs> I mean, but really enjoying himself and learning as well and listening yeah. to all of these amazing DJs, you know, do what they do. And it's pretty cool to hear him say that, you know, considering... And you know what? He, you know what? He shows us all respect to this day. Yeah. And you see, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? He shows that. us all respect to this day because always, every time, I, if I phone him, like when he does... Like the first time he done Wembley, I'm, I think I hadn't spoke to Andy for about a good few months. You know what I mean? Must have been about maybe a year, right? And when he done Wembley, I called him at the blue and I said to him, Andy, I need a guest list. Ken, no problem. Now, there's certain DJs who won't pick up their phone. Yeah. Right? You try and call them, right? But Andy, he 
answered it straight away. He went, what's happening, Ken? Geese? No, what's happening, Geese? Geese. That's how he talks, yeah. it. Geese. What's happening, Geese? <laughs> <laughs> and then he got me and then he said, no problem. You know what I mean? So, you know, respect to him. You know what I mean? But the rest of the crew, it was when Randall came to AWOL, right? For me, when Randall came to AWOL, he was on some different tip, right? The way he used to play his music, right? And for, I'm just talking about me personally, right? It made me step up my game, right? When Randall came to AWOL, right? When I'd done the first back-to-back with Randall, people were saying to me, can you fucking mad? He's going to bury you. He's this, 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 that, da, 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 da. right? <clears throat> I said, I don't Nothing care. Like a bit of positivity, eh? <laughs> yeah, and it, you know what I mean, Mick, right? They said, yeah, they said, yeah, Kenny's going to bury you. He's going to this, he's going to that, right? So anyway, the first back-to-back we've done, yeah, he went in on me. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. He did go in, right? Kenny he held he your did. ground, bruv. You hold your ground. Yeah, bro. I held my ground. I held my ground, but Randall went in, though, right? Because then remember, he had them reinforced boys behind him, you know what I mean? Yeah, They're feeding yeah. him with you know what I mean, right? So, but the second back-to-back we've done now, I said, that ain't happening again, you know. Watch this now. <laughs> <laughs> so Kenny let his tyres down. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's how Paradise was, though. Paradise, Paradise was a thing like, if Mickey, if I went there one week and I heard Mickey Finn play, and I heard Mickey Finn tear down the place, and some of the tunes I ain't heard before, I made it my business to find out what Tuesday was, even if I had to go that, around his house and sit down with him and have a cup of tea. That's the beauty about it, you know what I mean? And that's why I'm saying it was so special because every yeah. DJ you played, they was have to be on their A game. Yeah, hundred percent. They to play as good as the other person. That's why you never had anybody who played rubbish over there. Nah, nah. Everybody, nah. Was, there was no. Everyone was on point. Everybody was time. on point yeah. because yeah. people went and done their homework. Mickey coming yeah. there with some dub plate sometimes. I said, blood cloud, where Mickey get that from, yeah? And Mickey then, being know, the DJ. You know what I mean? He coming in, Tim, then. What's up, man? Right? Kenny come with his thing now. I said, right, all right, then. So who's next, then? So, you know what I mean? Randall come with one thing, then. Gashay come with it. Darren come with, like, everyone's coming with dub plates. Yeah. So, I mean, your VIPs, pure specials. And I'm saying to myself, because I'm not a DJ. I'm an MC. But I'm saying to myself, Ross, that man's not messing up. You know what no, I mean? mate. You know, no, so, no. I don't know, man. It, it, it I, mean, was... I mean, and, and just to go on that, Dave, right, I don't know I can only speak for myself, but I can play something that I know a million percent Gary's never heard before in his life, and he will read it like a book. Yeah, oh, yeah. There weren't, a lot, of MC, there weren't a lot of MCs out there, and I know a million percent he's never heard this tune on. He was shut up when the, the vocal come in. He just could read it like a book. And yeah. I think, Obviously, that's why the team loved working with him. You know, I know... Some hello, guys hello. Who oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, like, 10 hours. I was uh, going to say, you were the hardest working man out of all of them, really, Gary, because you were. You know. were the MC for the whole session until... Yeah, I don't know how he done it, though. Extended. Yeah, I mean, you know what, JP, you have to show JP and tell him, but he owes me some money, rough stuff, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I know, Ken, if you remember, there was a geezer standing next to him, looked like Pablo Escobar. And was it Pablo Escobar? <laughs> 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 I'm joking. No, he did. He had. You know what? Yeah, I think like I was I think, to him the other day. You know, we worked around you because he almost was the centre pole for the tent. Yeah, no, nah, for real. You know, he was for there real. all night. We were coming in as his guests, so to speak. We weren't. We were part of the team, but yeah, we were part of the team. He he was yeah. he was the totem pole for all of us. I think yeah. at that time there, I think doing all of them hours. You know, when I think about it, I, I was just really enjoying myself. Um, yeah. I was really enjoying myself because, you know, when Paradise finished and, you know, and we was doing some other work, I was only doing an hour. And in my mind, I was like, right to the hour. Is that it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying sweet. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm saying, yeah, I could do enough dances then. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because when I heard certain man MCs, they're moaning about, ah, I've got to do two hours and all of that. I'm saying to myself, bruv, two hours. Man was doing 10 hours. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So for me, two hours or hour, I was a doddle. I'm like, I could do that. I could be back in my yard eating flipping Rice Krispies. I'm like, this is a no problem. <laughs> you understand what I mean? It's, it's, it's nothing. But if I think about it now, I, you know, because me and Jay had a conversation about it one time and I was laughing. I said, bruv, you know what? You owe me some back pay, you know, bruv. 
You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> right? I said, 10 hours and all of that. I said, what man do you know who does 10 hours? That's Listen, how they're screaming nowadays. I mean, people MCs nowadays. What I mean? And that was like... <clears throat> I think the difference is, I don't know, I can only give my opinion, but Gary was a compare for the night. Yeah, yeah sometimes you just that's turn the word. Off, man, I don't know, we get to 7, 8 in the morning when we're doing that red eye 1 o'clock. He just yeah. turned the mic off, put it in his pocket, go and get a drink, and no yeah. one missed the beat. Because yeah. it, it, I don't know, I don't want to, the motor mouse, let's call on my fast tongue. Gary was a bit more of a a compare. It yeah. complimented the music. It weren't like, let me hear Gary's voice, let me hear Gary's voice, let me hear, it's like an onslaught <laughs> of MCs. I just, think Gary got in pockets and no Gary got it 100% and right and adding bars. the spice in all the right places yeah he got it 100% uh, right because like Mickey said he, he, Gary don't know remember Gary don't know what we're bringing to the table every week you know what I mean he don't know the new beats that we're bringing to the table every week but he used to ride them like like he knew them like he's heard all of them before you know what I mean and like that's special you know what I mean I think I think for myself because when you're working with like really great DJs and stuff, great artists, and if you're playing good music, um, I, I listen. I listen to music differently. Like when I was a you, I wanted to be a DJ. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? It never worked out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I became an MC, but I always was right. So I used to listen to music differently. Do you understand what I mean? So when I hear them mm. guys playing their music, I'm saying, right, gee, you need to squeeze in there, come out there. Sometimes I used to beat myself up. I'm like, oh, you've just done it too much over that. I used to be really critical because I want people to hear what them guys are playing. Yeah. But I also want to try and, you know what I mean, orchestrate it a little bit, but know where to drop out and let that roll out and then come in there, roll out for 16 or thing there, or just host it there. But I was just trying to list, work it out how people would like to listen to music. So, And not only that, gal, not only that as well, though, Another thing I know I, re- I remember about AWOL is that you was funny with it as well. I used to give two on jokes. Yeah, you used to you get enough joke really, on the mic as well. You know what I mean? You know, what I'm, you know my character. Mind you don't slip, mind you don't slip trip, <laughs> bust your lip. <laughs> yeah. You bust all the time. Yeah. Well, what was it? What was it? Who was it? Um, who was it? He was shout Archie, you wanted. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you'd get all, you'd get all, you'd get all the crew in there, man. That was the yeah. thing about as well, yeah. because there was so much different crews. Was the 49ers and all that there as well, Mick? Do you remember the 49ers? There's a bit of firm, I think that was from South London, but they was always there. Lean up, you know what I mean? Yo, do you know what I mean? Well, go out, you want a drink, do you know what I mean? I said, no, I'm right. There used to be loads of different pockets of crews. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But no, no problems. Yeah, no problems. Have a good time, you know. Leave all that at the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was no yeah, problem. That's right. We never had no problems in no there. No problems at all. That. And you no won't problems. Do anyway because the security would let you know. The security <laughs> was on point. It yeah, was on point. Yeah, they weren't having none of it. They were firm but fair, very fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah very fair. Yeah. yeah. Talking about a time, Dave, where like you no social media. Yeah. You got a brick mobile phone is your means of communication. That's uh, right. Really. So I don't know about Kenny, but I would have the boys that made Champion Sound. I got home from Friday night and they were sitting outside my house half six in the morning. They'd been working all night on Champion Sound. They drove straight down from Oxford because they want Mickey to play it Saturday night. <laughs> nah, go on. Or, or, or That's the dedication, isn't it? That's the dedication. I used to get man calling me to the studio. Come yeah, to the yeah, studio, yeah. hear this tune. We've got this tune. Like, I remember one time, remember when Stretch made that tune? Um, what's it called? The Frankie Paul thing. Mm. Uh, what's it called again? Anyway, Stretch was, made uh, this tune. Uh, Worries in the Dance. Yeah, Worries in the oh, dance, right? Big tune, man. Yeah, big when tune. Stretch made that, right? Stretch called me. I said, Stretch, oh, yeah, just, yeah, I'll play it. But here, what now? You've got to do me a special at that too, though, because it's AWOL, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's AWOL, right? And I remember when that tune got first drawn at AWOL, that. Blew the roof off the place, like yeah. so many other tunes. Big but, tune, mate. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Oh, mate. You know what I mean? You used to get producers calling me, yeah, Ken, we want you to listen to this tune. I want you to test it out at AWOL. Everybody wanted to get their tune. Yeah. 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 Over by AWOL. Yeah, okay. everyone wanted their tunes at AWOL. That's when, wicked. So we got to kind of wrap up a little bit now, but from just like from what we've been talking about, this is where like 
dub plate culture was really honed by a lot of you and that kind of competitive edge and really pushing each other. This is where MC culture, because this was such a new music. Gary, this is where you refine the craft and put down the benchmarks for where MC should be and what MC should be doing. This is where, like, you know, it's one of the very few nights, the weekly nights where so many aspects of our culture that we hold dear to us and are unique to jungle drum and bass. Now, this is where you guys were all sharpening your pencils. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Because I, I, I'm, I'm sure Kenny agrees. Sometimes, Dave. Honestly, we were coming out of cutting houses, and the birds were singing, mate. We'd been in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to it, and it, I can only speak for myself, but it. I just wanted the fresh gear. It weren't about me battling other people. Hmm. No. Nah. It, it so much good music in office yeah. here, and the only yeah. way that you've got a chance to plan it the weekend is to go and get dubs cut. You know, we were yeah. uh, coming out, we got so into it, we were going to buy our own blank dub plate boxes. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Bring it over the <laughs> with, with blank dubs. Yeah. So, you know, we'd go and buy boxes of them at a time. Transco. <laughs> yeah, we'd go down to Transco. Yeah, yeah. Sussed out who was importing them, and I flew yeah. into them. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure it was you that gave me the link. As it goes, you know that because yeah, you've got that serious, Dave. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It got, yeah. It got really serious. Then you were trying to find out who's the best cutter out of everyone. Music House was the pinnacle of the dub plates, but yeah, it was because we could all just turn up there and get. Yeah. Cut. You sh- if you're looking for the master crafter, you must be be looking at Stuart at Copy Masters. But his time was very valuable and you couldn't get into him as much as... And as well, well, Stuart, at Metropolis, me. Yeah, but he, that Metropolis took him. They nicked him right. from Copy Masters. Right, OK, OK. Yeah. Cutter yeah, yeah. of Copy Masters, but he was so good that Metropolis offered him a partnership. And yeah, he, that's right. Sorry, Metropolis, but you did. <laughs> that was how cutting edge it was that was how all on the cutting edge you were and how new and fresh and exciting and you were just forging into this like not really kind of knowing where it's going but right pushing that wave and just being with it really and being right on the cutting edge what you got that's where what you, was well you got to remember as well though it was financially it was it was it was costing us a lot of money spent on dub plates every week because i'm yeah. talking you're talking about sometimes 500 pound sometimes a grand on just on dub plates, you know what I mean? And it was a lot of money to be spending on music. They, then today, the kids have got it easy. All they've got to do is just fling it on their, on their pen drive and that's it. And they've got yeah. to go and play it in the club. But we have to go... Hey, you got that grand, you know I mean? You're still like Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, we live, you know I, mean, I suppose, uh, a drinker. It'd be like a slate at a pub. We would have slates there, a tick. Yeah. You know, if you went there and you cut me them dubs... Just put it on my bill, Chris, and yeah. come the end of the week, month, whatever. You know, oh, I don't know, just take it. <laughs> but it, yeah. it, it, it was serious dub play culture. Yeah, serious dub play culture. I mean, 30 years of AWOL now, this is the 30th of year. I mean, what, what, What's your most precious memory, right? We're going to leave on this one because we've all got to go now. We're all busy men. But in, in order, Mickey, Gary, then Kenny, just your first memory that comes to mind of just what what made AWOL special and why you're so proud to be part of that, really? Uh, I don't have a particular moment, you know, a particular night in there. I just, for me, it was every weekend in there was an uh, honour to be in there, um, to be representing uh, with an amazing group of DJs and one of the most amazing crowds that I've ever, um, you know, worked with. Because the crowd and the DJs, it was all one thing. Do you know what I mean? The DJs played to the crowd, but the crowd were there every weekend, without doubt, and that made us all a special unit. Do you know what I mean? So that's my thing. Oh, and that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Kenny. I, 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 or I'm, Mickey. Oh, I mean, I've, look, I'm friends with Gary and I, I kind of met Gary. I knew Kenny before. Uh, but I'm still friends with Gary, for example, and I met Gary through AWOL, really. And you met some great friends. I think it had an unbelievable community in that club. Like, 
if you was troublesome and you looked like they, the, the security weren't having it in there, and I, I love that it brought a great energy out of people. Amazing sound system. Personally, I don't think the club when they went to Victoria, it was about paradise for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never yeah. Great yeah. Ball as paradise, never again once it left paradise. Yeah, mm. you're right. There were right. nights at Victoria, but it kind of never touched. Paradise was something special that everything just clicked. Uh, you're right, mate. And, and it, it was a lead up, you know. It, it, if you was in the drum, drum bass and you wanted a good night, go away, well. And if mm. you got serious energy, I mean, I can remember it, this memory will stay with me forever. So the DJ used to be here, and there was an exit right there, Dave. And on the one o'clock session, I don't know if you ever went AWOL or anyone watching, <laughs> but just about 150 foot away was a market. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> on Sunday, that market opened. And I remember looking at the exit once, and I see two old deers there with bags of shopping just looking <laughs> <laughs> outside and just had a look on their faces like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> With steam coming at the club. <laughs> and that would never, ever leave me, mate, them two old uh, bags of fruit for Sunday dinner. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And Kenny, sign out now. Give us a um, memory treasure memory. For me, well. for me, like Gary said, I ain't really got no, nothing special because every week was special. Yeah. Every time you went to AWOL, it was special. You know what I mean? But for me personally, it was a game changer for the scene and it was a game changer for my career. Most you know definitely, I mean? man. Well, that's that. That's that. That's that. I could put that down to AWOL, you know? That's amazing. It was a game changer for jungle drum and bass culture, full stop. Thank you so yeah, much. And yeah. big ups to all of the other residents and everybody else who was part of AWOL as well. But a special big ups for you three for joining us on this call and telling us oh. the AWOL story. It's been amazing. I wish this conversation could carry on for longer. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Right, thank, you. Right. Take care. <laughs> take care. Thanks for your time, bro.